Hi everyone, I'm here today with John Debs, who is a lecturer in physics here at the ANU. And John is also involved a lot in the makerspace here at ANU. I thought I'd talk to you, John, um, to get your perspective on a few of my most asked questions relating to physics and relating to studying physics, because I think, you know, you're a lecturer, you've done your PhD, um, you might have a better perspective on it than I do. Mm -hmm. um, so just for a bit of context, what was your maybe your PhD area and what you're interested in now? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did my PhD in quantum physics, so uh, really cold atom and, and cooling them down. It was experimental, so we, although we did a little bit of theoretical work as well, we typically worked with theorists and I was on the experimental side. So building and making was a big part of that. And in fact, a lot of the physics learning I did, um, I feel like a lot of the skills and the really deep understanding came out of that experimental work. So it sounds like you see physics as a very valuable skill to have or yeah. knowledge, you know, as a tool set? Yeah, I would yeah. say the toolbox of a physicist is... Um, somewhat unique in society, uh, the yeah. approach to problem solving, um, being able to quickly estimate things and fact check. So you, you do think there are jobs for physics majors out there? Would you say you know, physics is a good major to set you up in life? I don't know anyone who's done a degree in physics, particularly at a, at a good institution, but, at, but anywhere, um, that has found it hard to find a job afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, that may not be a job that is mm. particularly physics-y, um, but in terms of their skill set and the transferability of that skill set, it's really high. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of nice to hear that because I think I, I've seen it echoed among like undergrad students in physics even. They're sort of worried about what they're going to do after because we hear a lot that there are not many jobs in the academic pathway, maybe mm. postdoc positions. And so we're told to expect to go out into the workforce, but maybe a lot of people aren't willing to give up you know, doing pure physics and, and do something more in industry. So I think there's an element of that. And I think a lot of people who sort of end up falling in love with physics, like solving little puzzles and are used to seeing textbook problems and getting through them and knowing they got the right answer yeah. and so on. It actually turns out that even in the world of academic physics, that's not the case. I'm sure you know, have, yeah. you know um, that often the answers are not clear. The data is noisy. You're trying to draw a conclusion. Things didn't work the way you expected yeah. them to. I actually found that the correlation between doing well at physics exams and doing well at physics research was not necessarily high. Like you maybe use a different part of your brain to do the physics research because there really are no right answers. Mm -hmm. And if you're used to getting right answers from the physics exams and assignments, mm -hmm. I don't know, they're not quite on the same level. No, I don't yeah. think they're strongly correlated. And mm -hmm. I think that the way that physics is traditionally taught um, doesn't necessarily train people well for being mm -hmm. good researchers. Yeah. Um, but it does train them how, on how to build models of the world and things. Yeah. And so for a lot of students, they probably don't realize it. And I think it is something we don't do well enough is giving our students the way, the kind of the pathway to other options. You, know, mm. you are, yes, you're doing physics, but actually this applies to a whole bunch of other things. Um, okay. And for a long time, the finance sector was snapping up physicists because it is about building models of observations and you know yeah. for, based on data uh, you can do that for all sorts of systems not just you know yeah, balls I, moving through the air I have heard of you um, know physics majors going into finance um, so I guess maybe the advice is for someone that's you know wanting to do a physics major but worried about jobs at the end maybe to sort of think broad because they're your skills are valuable, so you shouldn't maybe doubt that. Well, I think, I think that people should always follow their passions. And mm. so if you're really passionate about physics or science in general, I think physics is a really great starting point yeah. for getting that training in critical thinking, model building, numbers, mathematics, and so on. Um, but keep your eyes open, right? Take a few electives in other, other areas. What else are you interested in? Because um, yeah. it's probably more than just physics. And see how you might you know, be hungry and go out and see how you might apply those skills because it will lead you to being highly employable. Yeah. Um, and I think more and more society is actually starting to value and, and realise that those critical thinking skills um, do emerge naturally from people that study physics. That You can get them other ways. Um, you can get them from other degrees. Uh, but a lot of it is actually, you know, I, I, people have often told me you've really got to m kind of make the job that you want. 
Yeah, um, <laughs> I've heard so that have as well. A think bit of about, the hustle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you've got to have a think about what it is you want. Um, and, and often people, when they, they go into university, particularly if they just go straight from high school into university, they don't really know the answer to that question. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, that's, I think, a good thing to keep in mind. So another question, I guess, related is I have had people say to me, you know, physics is my passion. I really want to do physics. But maybe my parents tell me that there's no money in physics compared to something like engineering. And I've had people comment, you know, I love physics, but I'm going to major in engineering so that I can make money. Mm. What's your opinion on the engineering major? I see a lot of similarities between physicists and engineers. And in my opinion, I think you could sort of do either degree and end up maybe at the same place. But what do you think? Um, So I think it's a very complex question and there's a lot of facets to it. Uh, absolutely traditional engineering where you're designing something to solve a problem and you're building it relies on a lot of physics and any in my opinion any good engineering degree should cover a good amount of physics Um, the the thing about a degree that's often perceived by people in society I I think is that they associate the name of the degree or the major with a job Mm, an Um, engineer right (laughs) Uh, and so if you do physics, you're a physicist. If you do biology, you're a biologist. If you do medicine, you become a doctor, right? And there are a few degrees where that's kind of true. And they're the, the degrees that are linked to professions. So things like engineering and medicine and law, mm. the kind of classic um, p- things people went to university for, uh, you, you, you kind of have to do them to enter that profession. In fact, if you really want to work as an engineer, which means having that title and being able to sign off on, you know, that this building is stable, that this air conditioning system can provide the cooling or heating load required for the building. Um, You have to do an engineering degree to be accredited by the professional charter of engineers, right? Yeah, you need that certification. Now, if what you're interested in is like building the future electric car and working at a place like, you know, Tesla or or just solving interesting problems, working with data and big data, and you know, um, then there really, I, I agree with you, there really is no difference. And actually, in my experience, people that have a good solid foundation in physics become better engineers than people that kind of drive straight into the engineering without that foundational base. I'm not mm. saying that you can't have both, but, but you need to sort of, if you're looking for a degree that kind of has a bit of both, pick a, dig into the degree more than just the fact that it's called an engineering degree, look at what courses are being taught and maybe who they're being taught by, what faculties yeah. and so on. Um, because having that foundation in, in the, that, that foundational knowledge and approach in physics makes you really understand how the world works, how materials respond, how a design might, might be impacted by yeah. that. And I think um, that's what people are interested in when they say to me they love physics and want to make a career Mm. out of it. They're interested in that aspect of it. So I think that was a really good way to put it. Um, Yeah, Yeah, think about what you actually want to do, not what you want to be, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And some, some, I think some institutions will, you know, they will just have a little bit more physics in the degree than others. Um, Some people take the approach of doing a double degree um, where they actually do a science degree and an engineering yeah, degree at the yeah, same it's time. Yeah, quite common, I think. Um, and that's actually a really powerful combination. It takes mm. more time, of course. Um, the other option is that you can do a science degree in three years, and then you can do a master's of engineering, where you get that accreditation. You get to dive into the, the design and the professional principles of engineering, um, but you've started from having a pretty a good... broad base. I think that idea system. of um, starting quite broad and specialising when you get to masters is something people forget you can Mm, do mm. Um, and they get too worried about picking their first year courses to be everything they're interested in but they can you know specialize in that later on yeah Yeah. and I I can't recommend enough the value of doing electives outside of that discipline area I think in Australia especially um, the there's a sort of a focus on specializing and picking that thing right right at the beginning but you know, if you're interested in a language, if you're interested in the arts, if you're interested yeah, so in so you design, mean things like out of science, like the arts, totally, everything. totally. Yeah. Um, it will make you a more holistic person, member of society, employee. Yeah. Um, I think the importance of communicating when you're a physics and engineer is like a whole nother subject absolutely. as well. Like it's such an important part of yeah, the job. Definitely. Yeah. All right. I think that's some really good advice for that one, and I think. I'll ask you my third most asked question um, Mm -hmm. when I was looking through my comments, and that's really a concern from people who say things like, you know, 
they might watch my videos and say they love physics but they've failed some of their physics courses and they're not sure if they can continue in the major because they think they're just going to keep failing and they'll never get where they want to be and they sometimes ask me for advice they're like you know I failed all my first year physics courses should I pull out or how can I get better I know you probably have a lot of thoughts about physics education and, and how it works but maybe if if you know like a top piece of advice or something you know how can someone get better at learning physics um, how can they improve their grades so the first question I would ask to someone who has failed a few courses or is finding it challenging is is how much are you committing mm. um, one of the biggest things I see uh, in students is the more they engage the more the better their grades no, the more they, it's yeah. like anything, right? You've got to practice to get better at something um, and you have to engage with the content and go be, you know, often go beyond what is the minimum requirement say to pass the course or just, you know. Mm. Um, I think that particularly at a university level, there's been this sort of push to, you know, like a lot of, if you're, if you're still having your courses delivered in lecture mode um, and you're going, having to go to these lectures, these lectures get recorded and so you're not engaging with them. I dug up my old lecture notes the other day by accident and um, the level of detail and the drawings and the stuff, you know, there's actually a bit of a, a skill to how you would take mm. good notes in a lecture. Learning actively, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think that that's, lectures are not where you're going to get the best results. In my opinion, you need to go off and find other things that work for you. So if you feel like your lecture, your, your lecturer or your teacher hasn't explained things really well, go and see them. Yeah. Most, in my experience, most academic first particularly first year teachers um, or teachers that are teaching smaller classes and physics is often can be a smaller cohort they're really interested in students that are engaged they're quite happy to give them some time um, the other thing I'd really recommend and your viewers are already obviously using YouTube and, and engaging with that medium uh, there's a huge amount of really good YouTube channels that explain mm. science principles um, often physics principles honestly better than yeah. a, you know a lot of the teachers I've had in my life. I've made um, use of not just like popular science videos, but lectures from other universities absolutely. that are online. Absolutely. Yeah, MIT, um, everything, open course. You know, in, enroll, in, yeah, enroll in an edX course and have a look at what mm. the videos look like. You don't yeah. have to go through the whole course, but basically be proactive, um, find more content. Sometimes in physics, the challenge is maths. It's actually not necessarily that you don't get yeah. the concept. So I often find that there are people who really understand the concept, you know, that oh wow, okay, this is how gravity works and everything you know, falls at the same acceleration without you know, air resistance and things like that. But, but actually they have a trouble going through the mathematics, doing the algebra, yeah. linking or linking that to real world problems. And so actually working on your maths might be one of the best things you could do. Yeah, I definitely um, agree. Like maths can be an obstacle to doing well in mm, physics. Yeah. Um, it's not the be all and end all. Physics isn't about maths, but it is the language of physics and in fact maths is just a language of logic mm. right and science and so make coming at maths from that point of view and again I find that some of the best educational resources for mathematics are not necessarily the math teachers in universities but things like Khan Academy yeah. three brown three blue three, one three brown, blue, one brown. <laughs> yeah. um, you know that I, I, I still after 20 years of doing this stuff, I still find myself watching those videos and really thoroughly enjoying it. I still learn things from those videos. Yeah, like I, I have a math major as well, and I'm watching his like linear algebra yeah. in intuitions. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, like? and they give you these really beautiful <laughs> geometric examples and think pictures, right? Yeah. Pictures to hang on to. Um, and never before yeah. have we had more information available to us so easily. Mm -hmm. And actually, sometimes part of the challenge is um, finding the right information. There's mm -hmm. so much of it available. So much, you know, yeah. if you just Google one concept, you'll get so many possible um, explanations and takes on it. And, you know, do you trust it and so on? Um, Wikipedia is actually a really good resource yeah. for basic <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah. It's the most accurate encyclopedia it can, we It can have. link you to other references. Exactly. As well. All right. Well, thank you, John. No I worries. really appreciate your expertise weighing in on some of these because I think you know, your opinions will really help people. And I've been a bit scared to answer some of these questions on my own. Um, because you know, I worry that my perspective is a little bit narrow, so mm -hmm. it's good to bring someone else in a bit. Also, like you can do little experiments at home. Yeah. You know, just like <laughs> Lego Got a building home bricks. Experiment. <laughs> oh, this one's here. Oh, the battery. The battery, right? You can take a, a magnet, magnet, a battery, a screw, and a wire, and you can build a motor. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it. 
but then you can try and explain Figure how it, it works. Figure it out yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, John. No worries. And thank you guys for watching. See ya.